Hi everyone, in this video I want to talk about run length encoding which is a data compression algorithm that is very intuitive. Recall that uh, compression is basically a way of taking data that is encoded in par some particular format and um, reducing the number of bits that are required to encode that data. Now there's different types of data compression. Uh, lossy data compression where you might actually uh, lose fidelity of the data. We see this in video encodings and uh, there is lossless data compression where the same amount of information that was originally encoded is preserved in the compression and um, that's what I'm going to be talking about today, a, a, a particular brand of lossless data compression called run length encoding. So here I have the Wikipedia entry for run length encoding and you can read it uh, for yourself. Uh, I found that there's some useful examples here that we can use in the program that we're going to build. So first let's get an intuitive sense of how this algorithm works. Here we can see we have this string uh, data here and um, it is represented by two unique characters, W and B. So here you can see we have um, something on the order of, yeah, there's 12 W's here, followed by a single B, uh, followed by another 12 W's, and then three B's. Um, so run length encoding will basically take this data here and we'll compress it down to this format. Notice that we have the same amount of information encoded here, it's just that um, this string is much shorter than this one. Here you can see we say 12 W's, that's exactly what we had up here, and then followed by 1 B, 1 B, and then 12 W's again here, um, and then 3 B's, that's where we got left off here, uh, 24 W's, right, and then 1 B, and then uh, finally 14 W's. Okay, so uh, with run length encoding, we're looking for um, repeated sequences, and we take advantage of those repeated sequences, and we encode them in this more compressed format, and uh, thereby we can save space. Uh, wherever we're encoding this, whether we are encoding this in memory uh, to send over, um, you know, over a network, or uh, you know, we could be storing it in a file, um, and we could save space by storing the file. Of course, that means that anytime you want to actually operate on the data, you need to decode it. So in this video, I'm going to create an encode and decode method uh, in Java to build a very simple run length encoder. So. Let's jump right into it here. Let's create a new project. And we're going to use Java 8. It's going to be a Java project. And let's call it run length encoding. Uh, yeah, project name is run length encoder. So here we have this project run length encoder and we're going to add a new Java class. We call it run length code. And should be very simple. We're actually going to use the default constructor so we don't have to um, make any kind of fancy constructor that takes parms. And we're just going to have two methods on here, public string encode, uh, string source, the source string, and we will say public string decode final string encoded string str. So return null and return null. Okay, so this should be fairly straightforward. First, I want to have a string builder for the destination of the encoded string. So let's say final string builder destination is equal. And actually, let's call this builder. I like that better. 
should be very straightforward here, for int i equals 0, i less than source, length i plus plus, and let's say the run length, it starts as 1, int run length equals 1, and we're going to say while some condition, then we will, if some condition is true, we're going to increment the run length, and we will increment i. And this condition will be very simple. We just want to make sure that we, um, that the source string character at the current position is equal to the source string character at the position adjacent to it, to the right, up, you know, right, right next to it. So if those two are equal, then you are uh, <clears throat> continuing to increment the run length. But there's another condition here that we need to add, which is that i plus 1 is less than source.length. So you don't want to actually go through, um, you know, you don't want to check against i and i plus 1 if um, you're on the last character. So you can add a condition in here. Uh, to capture that, pretty simple, and um, you're just going to, uh, after you do that, you're just going to say builder.append run length and destination, or builder.append the character that it, we are looking at. That's it. And just going to say builder.build or two string. Okay. And here I'm going to use a shortcut as I develop on the class to generate a test case. So I think it's shift option T on my Mac. Shift command T on my Mac. I'm going to create a new test case. And it's going to be a Java, a JUnit 4 test case. And it says JUnit 4 library is not in the module. Fix it. Let's use the IntelliJ one. And say OK. OK, so now we're going to build this test case out. Let's call it test one. And what we're going to basically say is final run length encoder. Run length encoder is equal to new run length encoder. And we'll say final string test data is equal to, and we're going to give it a series of letter A. So let's count out 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Now let's multiply that out five times. 2, 3, 4, 5. So that's our raw data. And we're going to say final string encoded data is equal to run length encoder dot encode test data and final string decoded data is equal to run length encoder dot decode encoded data. Now we're just going to run some simple tests. Assert equals uh, test data dot length should be 50 characters. Assert equals encoded data dot length and that should be three. So let's take a look at this. Let's fix the imports on that. Let's run this test case. All right. And let's say our cert equals raw data, or uh, test data and decoded data. That should be the same string. And assert equals raw uh, test data dot length and decoded data dot length. 
those should be the same. Finally, let's write a print stats method on the test data and the encoded data. And print stats, <clears throat> that's just going to be a very simple method that we're going to write to demonstrate our uh, the, the savings that we got from doing this. So let's say private static void print stats and final string test data, final string encoded data. Okay, so let's do some simple stuff here. Let's just say that test data equals test data. Encoded data equals encoded data, and final float savings is equal to 1.0 float minus float of encoded data dot length divided by test data dot length uh, multiplied by a hundred and say system dot print line savings is equal to savings percent. Oops. Now let's run this method. Oops, okay. And let's see where we get the difference. That's why test cases are so important. Um, let's set a breakpoint here. So we're gonna step over, over, Oh, you know what it is? I know what it is. We never wrote decoded data. We never wrote this method uh, for decode. So step over, step over. That's going to fail. Uh, but notice that the encoded data is 50A, which is correct. And the test data, so that's a huge savings right there. But what um, we haven't done here um, is to run, to write the method for decode. And this should be very easy. You should be able to write this very quickly, um, especially with Java 8. So here's what we're going to do for decode. We're going to say final string builder uh, builder is equal to new string builder. Similar sort of pattern to encode. Final pattern pattern is equal to new pattern. Oh, I'm sorry. It's equal to pattern dot compile and what we're going to say is that it's equal to a digit one or more digits um, and followed by something that is not a digit. Very simple pattern that I'm going to create here. So it's basically just some number followed by something that's not a number, basically. And we'll say final matcher matcher is equal to pattern dot matcher the source or the encoded string and while matcher dot find each one of our groups we'll say builder dot append 
And this is where we use Java 8 string dot join. And we'll give it, we're going to give it empty. And collections dot end copies of integer dot parse string parse int matcher dot group one and matcher dot group two. I think that's right. Collections dot end copies. Uh, let's see. You give it an int and a string. I think that's what I did. There we go. Okay. So I'm basically using that, and then I say builder dot two string. And I'll explain this in a second. So basically we're going to get a string with a bunch of um, compressed compressions inside of it, uh, which um, maps to a number followed by a, a, a letter, right? So we say like 50 A's. So that you, you can say, you can imagine a string where we have 50 A, 20 B, 30 C. We're going to go through and find each of those instances and we're then going to inflate um, using collections.endCopies. We're going to say how many times do we want to inflate that? Well, that maps to group one in, in, in this pattern, this group right here. And group two maps to anything that's not that number, and that's how, how many times we're going to repeat it. So now if we run this test case, hopefully it will pass. Uh, Okay, not quite. Let's see what the difference is. Let's rerun the debugger. Boom, 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 boom. The decoded data is blank. So what we want to actually do, let's see. Let's step into this method using step in. Okay. So now let's see, do we find anything? No, we don't find anything. So there's something not right about my pattern here. So basically I've said, let me try this one more time here. I didn't get this right. So I have a quote, so I should say open bracket. The That followed by that, right? And then followed by anything that is not a digit. Followed by close plus. Let me try that test case one more time. I may have just mistyped it. There we go. That worked. The test case passed. And we can see that I have 94% savings, right? That's huge. I, I, I've reduced this string um, by, by a ton, right? Um, actually, yeah, I went from, so if we go, I went from three, let's see, so, 3 over 50, 0.06, right, the, uh, of the original. Um, we've reduced it down to point z to basically 6% of the original uh, string. So that's huge. That's uh, tr tremendous. Now, we could also write, um, you know, some, some string for which we actually... Um, have a longer encoding than the original string. 
So I'll leave that for you as an exercise, but if you don't have, basically for run length encoding, if you don't have uh, repeats in your string, uh, then it's not going to make sense. And that really um, will help you understand where run length encoding makes sense to use. It's, it's really good for image data because there's a lot of repeats, right? Like in, in my screen here, there's a lot of white. So that's going to be the same pattern with, with um, you know, and, and then followed by a break of the white, um, but uh, with black, right? Um, so I think that, um, you know, you, you, get, you, get, you get the idea there. Uh, but if you don't have a lot of repeats, it's not going to work as well. So you should look up what the applications for run length encoding are. Um, and uh, hopefully you found this video useful. Please do uh, comment, like, and rate. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.